so the curves. Why would you use it over other tools? We all know that it can replace a lot of Lightroom adjustments, but it's harder to use. So why do people like me keep insisting that you use the curves over the much easier sliders? What can you do with curves that you can't do with other adjustments? Keep watching and you'll find out. Let's start with the easiest one. Curves let you create many different types of contrast. For example, you can create a standard S-curve and then choose how strong it is depending if it's in the shadows or highlights. You can also use it to create a faded film look, something that you cannot do with any other Lightroom settings. Lifting the blacks will make the blacks grey. Crushing it will clip out the details. You can also do this to the whites. Unlike contrast, exposure is not something a lot of people use the curves for. First of all, the exposure slider does a better job than the tone curves. You should always use the exposure slider to fix the exposure. But if you are using it as an effect, such as creating a high or low key effect, you should use the curves. This lets you have two exposure settings, one for correcting your photo and one as a color grading. So if you create a preset and use it on the rest of your photos, it won't overwrite the exposure setting. Everything is inside the tone curves. A lot of people use the white balance to make their photo a little bit warmer or cooler. But the white balance setting should actually only be used to fix the white balance. Again, just like with the exposure setting, we use the tone curve so that it doesn't overwrite the retouching settings in your photo. You can make it warmer or cooler in the RGB tone curves. For example, you can switch to a blue channel and drag up to increase the blues or down to reduce it. You can also choose how warm or cool you want it to be depending if it's in the shadows or highlights. Finally, split toning. You can replicate any split toning with the RGB curves. It's harder, but it is better. With split toning, you can create basic smooth tints like this and then adjust the balance. It's quite flexible, but there's two things that the curves does better. One is that you can choose more saturated colors and you can go as far as creating a nice dual tone effect. The other is that you can choose where the tint gets cut off. For example, if we tint the shadow screen like this, it looks quite flat. But with the curves, you can choose where the tint ends. This gives you much better results. So overall, the curves can replace a lot of Lightroom settings and give you more control. It also separates the color correction from the color grading, which is why you see it used heavily in Lightroom presets. If you want to learn how to use the RGB curves, Check out my tutorial on the tone chart technique. The secret to learning the curves is not by memorizing shapes, but by developing the instinctive feeling for how it works. And you can learn how to do that with the tone chart technique. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked it, please remember to hit the like button. Now there's one more reason why you should learn the curves, and that is that it's used everywhere. Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, Capture One, Affinity Photo, even on your phone you have apps like Snapseed and Polar. It's the most universal tool that you can learn. Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.